welcome back to Vino Games and it's time for testing this latest patch from Summoner's War. In my opinion, it's more OP, especially for the Dark Archangel, where his damage was increased by more than 40%. I mean, that's a that's a big bonus. Um, for Chibu, technically, you know, you're going to use a strip for, say, at the beginning of the battle. So at the most, you'll be stripping would be shield will so that would be two beneficial effects on each monster so that's around say 30 percent but of course it, during mid game or during the fight you can strip more than two beneficial effects but at the end of the day you need a stripper to pull out your combo so yeah the most you would get or can get at the beginning of the battle would be 30 percent that's still not bad it would be the same attack bar buff of the Brownie Magicians, like say, Orion and of course, Draco. Or is it Draco? Draco. <laughs> yep, and here's the rest of the patch. Definitely good for the Sylphids, as they provide more recovery amounts by 5%. And also, it's good that they're doing damage based on their max HP, because at the end of the day, you do want these monsters to be um, what do you call this? HP built because they provide the sustain their team needs by heals or increasing attack bars. Yeah, I think they're still fixing that one, the light Neostone fighter. It's so known as Lucas. And of course, our main, what do you call this? Toa monster. Hua, the fire Akasha. That gives her like an additional 5% to hit again that's definitely more than a violent proc so anyway let's go straight to the action and test the monsters that we have from the patch now what we're gonna do here is we're going to do a safe round with our safe teams and then we're gonna go test out the different monsters that have been buffed or yeah let's see if those or that patch is game changing for these monsters or not now we're battling candy house here and we're going to work on popping this john now with our thunder strike so that when this juno strips she won't be able to provoke and of course the mars is going crazy <laughs> yeah 3 vs 1 with a defense buff and immunity even if say oh nice freeze yeah even if that Theomars goes Valent crazy we're gonna try to stun him so he doesn't get a chance to hit us twice and even if he procs into Violent he only hits us or gets to hit us once but then I've seen fights lately that cost like 3 Violent procs or yeah what's the most you've encountered with those violent procs. Have you seen like four or five? I think I, I can remember as much as three, I think. Yeah, cause that's like 22%. Okay, now for this guy, we can see here the buff Leo, and we bring in our Rocky. Now we didn't bring in a sustain here, because I wanted to kill this Perna on our first turn with this soul crusher and honestly you can maybe hit or that buff was more for like uh, oh man what wow this leo is so tanky <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah technically we should be able to bring in Rocky against like a Theo Mars because then her hit ignores all effects that resist death. So that would include that passive Elemental King passive of Theo Mars. And then, yeah, I don't know. But then, of course. She's still fire and he still win. So technically, yeah, I don't think. I mean, of course her hits won't land as glancing hits. 
Yeah. But in terms of Perna or whatever, it's pretty much still the same. But yeah, we're gonna do two Guild Wars so that we can test out these monsters on different scenarios. And we're kinda dying here. <laughs> this Leo. Yeah, I guess that it's a good combo with a uh, attack bar buff from that Ryan and then Okay, GG. <laughs> uh yeah, Leo, huh? Okay, that's the defense from Romulus. Now let's go hit a plus two tower. Let's see, we've won the Guild War, so pretty much we can do anything that we want at this point. Let's see. Let's go hit Kokose here. Definitely an OP G3 player. Um, for the first round, we're gonna bring it. We're gonna play it safe. But I'm thinking for this John. Theomars Eladriel. Let's bring in our Kali, Chloe, and Katarina. Now, they kind of lessen the chances of that Sword of Discharge to hit different monsters because now when you use Sword of Discharge, it's sure to hit one player or one monster, and then the rest they're just going to go randomly. Because previously, when you use Sword of Discharge, you would try to hit, say, Eladriel, but then it goes only to Theomars. Like, all three attacks go to one monster, which doesn't really make sense, right? It's so RNG-based that I believe not a lot of players, or a lot of players for that matter, have tried to avoid using Katarina, except if you had, like, a Jamire. I have a Jamire on my alternate account, Snoochies, and it's just OP. You know, John Meyer in Guild Wars is OP. You can pair him up with a Katarina, with a Lucian, with whatever, and he's gonna hit those monsters twice. Yeah, some teams I use with John Meyer on my alternate account would be like, of course, say a John Meyer, and then you can bring in that Water Garuda Konamiya with a Lucian, and then Lucian's just going to amputation magic twice and kill those water monsters it depends on what defense you're attacking and then at the same time you can also pair him up with this chloe katarina and then for the first round this molong skogul harmonia i'm thinking let's just bring in our molong and then we need someone to kill that enemy molong so i'm bringing in my uh, what do you call this? Arnold. My nemesis. Nemesis. Will Arnold. And then of course Icaris. To provide us with the heals. And to follow up with that reckless assault from our Molong. To make sure that we kill two monsters at once. Or right away. Okay, let's see. There goes reckless assault. Gives our Arnold the attack bars. Kill him. And then I'm not gonna use our thing first because that Harmonia has her passive or that skill, that unwanted harmony skill. So let's go work on killing this Skogul because when his Atlas Stone lands, we don't have enough heal. So look at the attack bars. Molong's gonna get the turn after our Icaris. So Dark Recovery and then Reckless Assault. Done deal. <laughs> okay. So it's a safe team, a very reliable team because there's no crit rate element that you need to compute for. It's just a matter of popping two teams or two monsters and then just battling this Harmonia and waiting for the cooldown of our Molong's Reckless Assault and Icarus' Dark Recovery before we can just pop this, uh, what do you call this, this Harmonia. So we have three HP based damaging skills. Okay, she can heal. Now looking at the attack bars, we can reckless assault her. Bam. Okay. Of oh nemesis though. But dark recovery. Okay, GG. Now here's the tricky part. 
Of course, that Eladriel is only going to hit wind. Now with no damage on his teammates, he's going to hit wind. Oh! <laughs> yeah, and of course, strips and ruins our combo because then, even if we provide like attack buff to our Katarina, if she's not invisible, that sort of discharge just ain't gonna work. Now, I'm thinking, what can we do? We can try to work on, say, Theo Mars. And we're gonna hit Theo Mars, kill that Eladriel with our Kali. Uh oh. Yeah, we'll still try. Can we kill Eladriel? Oh, not enough! Yeah, Candy House is a legend guild. So, I'm not sure if this is a perfect <laughs> guild war or guild battle to start testing out these monsters, but what do you know? It's <laughs> OP teams. But of course, RNG can be a. Can be a. <laughs> GG. Yeah, so far, mm, not really game changing. You know, I mean, it's not like as if they made Katarina like, once invisible, you cannot be stripped or whatever. <laughs> okay, let's go hit Lucas over here. I built my um, light samurai. So, let's see. And this time, let's bring in sustain with our Wusa. Okay, where is Tossi? Okay, here's Tossi. I built him on shield will with all his stats or skills maxed out. I built him a long time ago. So technically, he should be able to do more damage. And with that awakening into speed, it's better. Because previously, I built a lot of shield will teams like when I was starting the game and if they're not as fast like if you of course if you build a shield will team you want them slow but sometimes when they're too slow the enemy gets two turns so yeah but yeah, I know what you're thinking you're thinking like but you're bringing Wusa anyway why are you bringing shield will well for this team it's just extra immunity against the bombs of that Sierra. Now let's see how we do. Come on, Tossi. Um, okay, Bastet did not do her skill. Okay, we'll have to wait. See, good thing we brought in Wusa. Because now at least we have um, three rounds of will. But what happened to... Yeah, let's just break the will or the shield on this Bastet. Um, she's going to do Oasis Blessing on her next turn for sure. Okay. And then that Odin is going to attack either Galleon or Wusa here. But let's do the defense break because we need to pull out our combo. Before, yep, because Galleon's gonna die. Okay. Tossy. How much damage will you do with Light Slash? And now it's going to activate our fourth skill with a critical hit. Not bad. Okay, Sword of Supreme Wolf. It's good we still have will. Oh! The pain from this Odin. Okay, of course we're gonna use Sword of Supreme Wolf or Sky Wolf while we still have attack buff. Nice damage from Tossi. Yeah. Yeah, that's the thing. You know, like if you bring in a shield build and then you expect that Bastet to do Oasis Blessing, 
and then she doesn't do Oasis Blessing and does Curse of the Beautiful, then it's like a GG because then yeah <laughs> then they're just going to bomb you and then you lose everything and then there goes your combo, right? So that's the thing with uh, first turn RNG game, you know, it's just RNG you can never tell <laughs> okay now for this team yeah brought in our OP Bolverk Emilia and Skogul with the enhanced runes we can work on this Triana because she's the main sustain of the team but then yep you see here the light panda also known as Tian Lung and that light vampire Julian who has that immortality passive where he regains HP by absorbing 10% HP from all other allies hmm now thinking of that can Rocky actually block that passive yeah interesting yeah, yeah, yeah thought just crossed my mind yeah if, we're gonna try to test that if we find like another Julian later on um, yeah but I had to run like a save team and then test team so that we can show you um, like what the different skills of these buff monsters are or what the effect is on the game but let's see okay there goes our first guild war of testing and then we're gonna do another guild war you wanted to see my defense so here's my defense I have a Molong Perna Taranis and a Jean Theomars Eladriel definitely not the best but it's doing okay I must say um, do not underestimate defense. Be careful when you're attacking. <laughs> yeah. Um, double revive, man. So onwards to the next guild war. In this guild war, we're battling Lazy Junior. Well, they, they are not as junior as you think, you know. Let's bring in our Bulwark's Emilia Skoggle over there. And then this time around, let's bring in Rocky again. Now, again, because her skill has been buffed, right? Where she prevents the monster from dying and ignores all what skills that pretty much ignores death or resists death. So we bring her against this Triana whose salvation passive would give her the turn if that Perna dies and then I'm bringing in I need to bring in a wind tank so that in case we miss the damage on that Perna she's going to hit into our wind monster and then for of course we need Galleon for a defense break and attack buff to support our Rocky now in the previous guild war when we used rocky it was wrong because we didn't bring in sustain and we weren't able to survive the damages from that leo now here's rocky again and then we're just gonna do our op bulwark emilia scoggle here although i sh i think i should have brought halfas though because then halfas will be tanking that Ziratu. because right now without a wind monster all these monsters like our whole offense team will be yep will be attacked by that Ziratu so mm, let's see it's kind of dangerous though <laughs> I mean it's not the best team to bring against this Ziratu because she's gonna hit everyone look he's hitting he hit our Bulwark he hit our Skogul but at the same time he's hitting Emilia but his team doesn't have a heal so we need to get rid of this Orion oh hey nice one because that Orion was going to be the one doing the defense break and then every time that Jirato would buff he'd get the attack buff and then immunity 
and will destroy whichever monster has that defense break or a lower HP ratio. And now we're just going to lower down the HP of the Ziratu and wait for our next Atlas Stone to go around or to come around. But because Komun has been hitting our Skogul, we have the Atlas Stone again. And when that lands, yep, it's just going to be a GG. So enhanced runes, speed shooting, bam. Okay, here we go. Alright, so again, good thing we brought in our Triana here, because then Perna just hit her. Yeah, I'm going to save um, our time to loot for later. Or should we... Yeah, I'm not gonna... Can this kill Perna? Because I need the attack buff and defense break for later. Yep, so it definitely ignored... What do you call this? Triana's salvation passive. Because it didn't give her a turn at all. And... Kill Perna. Stopped or prevented Perna from reviving. So that's a lot better for our Rocky, or for Rocky for that matter. Um, but then my Rocky isn't exactly fully skilled up. Okay, let's heal her. I Which is fine, I mean... Yeah, I kinda have to kill up a few more monsters and Rocky is kind of um, it's okay definitely an OP monster but I have yet to build teams around her so yeah good job Rocky okay it's three versus one there's no chance this Triana can solo I mean here's the damage with attack buff that's around 34k with no skill ups. Yep, GG. Okay, next battle we go hit Yuppie. See, such an OP. That's not, I mean, <laughs> LD monsters everywhere. Where's mine? <laughs> okay, for the team below, we're gonna bring in again our Kali. Chloe, Katarina, but this time they don't have a strip, so that's good for us. Um, and then for the team above, I'm thinking let's outspeed him because that Fran is only a 19% speed lead, and we have a Galleon with a 24% speed lead and a fast frigate. Question is, can we cleave the Zirato and Gianna Fran combo? Let's see. Are we faster? Yes. Ooh, full speed ahead. Time to loot. And how much damage can amputation magic do? 12k per card. Done deal. Okay. This is a better team to bring this Katarina team against because. Oh, thank you for the violent proc Skogul. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Okay, we're gonna sort of discharge onto this one on Triana and then the rest, I don't know. There goes Triana. There goes John. Nice damage from our Katarina. Yep. So imagine if you have you have like a Jamire to combo that with and then Say you can bring in a QB or a Chloe if you're fighting against like a Jean because QB doesn't provide a will buff or a immunity buff so that's dangerous if he gets provoked and then that's just not gonna work. Okay, now I don't know. <laughs> Let's bring in a safe team. For the team below, second round is our safe team with our Fangian, Wusa and El Sharian. But I want to bring in Emilia instead because that Praha is going to strip and that's going to be very dangerous for us, especially with that cry of threat and Fongyan doing all that damage. 
And then for the team above, I don't know who can we play with here. Um, I'm thinking that Leo destroyed us in the earlier Guild War. So let's bring in Leo. <laughs> Leo. Um, yeah, I don't know. Someone to thank this Perna. Or not really tank. I mean, we can do this. Just do a copper, Wusa, and then, of course, Bolivia. And then that's this team is a GG. We're, we're just gonna go Thunderstrike that, um, what do you call this? This Koggle, and it's gonna be a GG. But then we're not gonna do that because we want to play with. Yeah, Miho is not gonna work because Skogul does damage based on his HP with that Atlas Stone and not critical hits. So Miho is just gonna be a bye bye. <laughs> uh, that's that's just gonna kill her. So that's dangerous for Miho. Yeah, let's bring in. Yeah, we can do this. Eladriel, Leo. And like uh, maybe Triana or Harmonia. But then that's not going to be... Yeah, it's going to be okay. It's going to be a long drawn fight because we don't have enough damage to kill that Skogul while John and Perna have heals on their passives. Or, yeah, John has a heal on her first skill, that is. Alright, let's see. I want to keep it exciting and let's play with it a bit. So I'm going to bring in my fire guys. Let's bring in Garo with a speed lead. We're not going to bring Will. How's that? Uh, I mean, we're not going to bring immunity, which is kind of stupid. Hey, you know, stupid to not to bring immunity against Zan. Of course. Um, yeah. Let's do this. Garo, Rakuni, Leo. A suicide mission. So, if that Perna procs a violent, it's gonna be a GG. <laughs> For Garo. Because Perna's gonna be hitting hard. I'm pretty sure that Perna is going to hit hard because this is, yeah. But let's keep it exciting. Um, I'm hoping Perna does a lot of damage or that Skogul Atlas Stone does enough damage so we can do our torrent to that Skogul. Yeah, we, can we, we have to stun this John? No stun! Yeah, Perna should do a lot of damage to our Leo here so that we can get Torrent. Not enough again! No Torrent! No! <laughs> ah, man. Yeah, I was hoping for Perna to do damage to our Leo and then Leo would be able to torrent that Skogul and get his health back. Yeah, or whatever. But then again, we did bring Will and Perna. Okay, Valent Proc. Wow. Three Valent Procs. Off the bat. Um, yeah, it's a GG for Leo. Uh, stun. Because she's gonna provoke again. Did it. And that's fine. Violent procs. <laughs> GG. <laughs> yep. I mean, it's a G3 Guild War. What do you expect? We're supposed to have fun. Anyway, and it's still fun. It makes the game fun. Although, it can get frustrating at times, but just be patient and have fun with it. Okay. Now, this team 
is pretty much uh, sure win because the only damage dealer here is that Fang Yan who is going to keep hitting onto our Emilia and then Praha can do whatever she can predict the future but we can still oh nice additional now you give me additional turns yeah so they say it goes around what goes around comes around come to us then where is my light park angel artamel <laughs> wishful thinking okay well, that's pretty much all our monster battles for today so we were able to cover again Rocky also thank you for making that request for requesting for a Rocky video so we pretty much highlighted her here especially in timing with the patch which is very good and also we covered Leo um, yeah not the best example so watch out for that video we're gonna test him out but more often than not he's best with player versus player than play player versus enemy um yeah especially in rta right like i've seen a lot of leo ragdoll combos and they're just so op man yeah i can't wait for the next season of rta to come around um also we were able to test out the light samurai tossi now let's go back to our monster box so we can show you another round of their builds Okay, here's Tossi. High crit rate, but awakens into speed, so that's why he's faster. Fully skilled up, so that damage was definitely good with enough crit rate and speed. Because then, you need crit rate in order to activate that supreme Skywolf skill. Yeah, Sword of the Supreme Skywolf. Okay. And then the other monsters you saw today. Um, here is, of course, our copper. The more defense you build him on, the more damage he's going to make, of course. And crit damage. Don't forget about crit damage. It would be best to have him on will, but yeah, I have yet to farm those will runes to give him a higher crit damage and defense and then here's my enhanced Skogul still grinding a few of his runes but yeah 33 plus 33 percent HP is not bad that's like 34 plus the towers okay here's our violent Molong that we paired up with our Icares I have to work on my Icares though because right now she's on broken set um, Emilia, you don't really need to put a violent rune or violent runes on her. Um, of course, it's better to have her on violent. I mean, especially pro players put her on violent. But I just put her on speed or on swift. And then here's Bulldozer. Violent Will. And then, of course, you also saw our Katarina with that sword of discharge. Rage Blade. You can put her on wheel too, of course. And that's it for today. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please leave a like and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more content. And like what we always do, may the force be with you. See you on the next one. Now here are some Special League World Arena NB4 fights. Featuring Second Awakened Ramahan, we'll show you Eliana, Second Awakened Mina, and Second Awakened Miho. Some OP combos from our Guardian players in the last week of this special league, and of course, a few of our own fights. Don't forget Ashir too. Enjoy and salute!
Hey.